Thank you for being here. We, uh, we, we, we enjoy your presence and we'd love you to, to enjoy the service uh, in the next two, uh, uh, well, not two, uh, an hour or so. All right, um, uh, just a very quick announcement. We do have a connect group. Um, obviously, you guys know that our connect groups is a very vital um, uh, tool that we can uh, that we that we have here in order to connect with people, in order to connect with God and, and our brothers and sisters um, around us. So I'd like to encourage you to, to actually come and attend to our connect groups every Tuesday. Some of them actually have it on on Wednesday and Friday. So they, the numbers of the leaders are there for you to contact. If you're not really sure about you know where to uh, where to go to, uh, just Try to remember where you where you live and try to contact the nearest or the, the proxy um, um, area um, that's close to um, where you live. All right. So we do have a couple of numbers there for you to contact. Do not hesitate and you know, just grab the numbers. Um, you know, just contact the person and we'd love to um, connect with you. And um, you know, and from there we can actually study the Word of God together deeper and better. Amen. All right. Now. Um, the next um, um, announcement is about the, the church camp. Now, the church camp uh, will need to be actually revised once again because of due to um, um, some some factors, especially about the um, uh, the, the cost that is so expensive in booking a uh, place in home. So, um, the, the leadership and the um, uh, the core of the church uh, need to have to sit down and talk about that a little bit further. So that needs to be revised. Uh, so please um, do not do not think that we're going to cancel it yet. Uh, just be ready and just be prepared for that. Church camp is a it's a wonderful, transforming, uh, life changing experience that you can that you can uh, have uh, in your life um, just before the end of the year. All right. And uh, so, um, without further ado, um, I'd just like to invite um, Pastor Saul to come here and to bring the word of God. Can we all please clap our hands to the Lord for him? And how many of you have been blessed by his ministry? I am, I'm an you know, and, and I will always be, and uh, I just really love to, to see him preaching once again, and just, you know, with fire of God, with the spirit of God. So, um, just enjoy the service, enjoy the word of God, amen. Amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbors and uh, once again welcome them to the house of the Lord. Tell them it's good to see you. You sang beautifully. If you, even if you did, I still love you. All right. Oh, chat a bit. <laughs> and we still love you. Huh? And you still did it, but still love you. <laughs> and when you still did it, did it is meaning. Something already done. Beauty. Still love you. Everyone, want to welcome the first time visitors. Those of you who are joining us for the first time. Um, most of all, they've wondered why is the pastor leading worship and trying to preach at the same time. Well, I appreciate our worship leaders who get up there for Sunday. And uh, lead us in and out every Sunday, and uh, you know, I just thought I'd be doing great. So, amen. Come on, why don't we just appreciate the worship team? They get up there every Sunday, <laughs> and they come in on Saturdays, and they practice, you know, and then they come on Sunday early, and they pray up, and they practice again, and then they get up and sing. And you know, it's not easy doing it every every Sunday. It's just you know. But, um, you know, let's just continue to pray that God really fills them up you know, with a fresh spirit and just more love and singing, uh, full of glory and playing. Um, you know, we're not here to show up or anything, but, you know, whatever we have, we give. All right? And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, more blessed to give than to receive. receive. So I want to really thank Joshua. Wine was uh, who's been leading the worship team and as well as the worship leaders and all the time fans. <laughs> Uh, and those who we play, um, and uh, especially one person who's going to be leaving us. Um, it's his last Sunday with us, and it's none other than our loud drummer, <laughs> um, Ryan. Why don't we just get him up? We're going to pray for him today. And uh, you know, just, uh, uh, listen. And uh, I don't know if he wants to say anything. Well, I've been in Timor uh, 
seven or eight months. And, you know, uh, I think growing up in church, um, it's easy to get kind of jaded on, on, on the church. Um, after a while, you know, you, 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 um, you don't like one thing, you don't like another thing. You get kind of, as long as you get kind of over it. And uh, for me, kind of over the uh, church culture a bit, and seeing, seeing church on the superficial side, and everyone coming and having to be perfect. And, um, and uh, this church is not like that. Uh, it's not a church where you have to come and, and be perfect. Um, no one, everyone here has, has issues, and um, I think that's what really kind of it, it's kind of brought me back to um, to the truth about grace, to, to, to the truth that um, we're, we're all messed up, but we're all we're all um, looking forward um, because we're we think uh, so. It's really kind of you know, in that sense, in the, uh, trusting the church of the people can hear. Yeah. 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 Well, what do you think about the vision that uh, yeah, right? kind of was uh, pray and bless uh, Brian today and just um, as he goes, wherever he goes with the Navy, um, that God would just uh, be with him in the street. <laughs> Father, we want to thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for our awesome brother that's with us. We thank you bringing him and the fellowship that he has brought. And we pray, God, even as he's about to leave uh, Timor and uh, go on to the next place, we pray that you can be with him. We pray you go before him and, and Lord, you direct and guide him in every step. Lord, many times we're like sheep that go astray, but Father, that's why we need you in our lives to, to, to lead us to the right pasture. And I, and I pray, oh God, that you just, um, by, the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, just Lord, to lead him, oh God, and, and every decision and every choice. And we pray, oh God, that wherever he goes, would be a light. Lord, that, uh, Father, he would bring people to the knowledge of who you are. And I, and I pray, oh God, that you just use that, that simpleness inside of him, oh God. Lord, of sharing your love, oh God, to others. And I pray, oh God, you bless him. Lord, and his colleagues and his friends that will also be traveling with him, protect and keep them safe, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, um, Lord, we're not uh, uh, saying goodbye, but Father, we're sending you forth to the nations. Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, Lord, that you just continue, Lord, to lead him and let him begin to believe and, and live a life of faith, to trust, oh God. You, Lord, we may not know at times where we would end up and where we would go, but we trust in you. Lord, just like uh, Abraham, Lord, in his journey of faith with you, Lord, and that's how, Lord, we should live our lives. And I pray that you that, um, Lord, with Ryan. And I just want to speak this word over you, Ryan. For your eyes have not, for no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived of the things that God has prepared for you today. And I just want you just to believe and, and trust in Him in all things. Uh, whatever it may be, may it be finances, may it be your future. You just, you know, God has things that we do not, that He has prepared for us that we may not know, but just trust Him. Father, we thank you, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, you know, we're going to continue on in our series that we've been uh, going on in, in terms of uh, that, that, that saves me of the church. And uh, this week, this past week, as you know, we've been having a time of prayer and fasting. And, uh, you know, we've just been praying and that uh, God led me on Monday just to, you know, uh, talk about the spirit and power. And um, how many know that it's so important? You know, we're not just um, living a life of Christ in our own understanding and in our own strength um, uh, and, and how we like it, but we want to live by the spirit and we want to live not just in the spirit, but also in power. Are you with me? The Bible says that he who receives the Holy Spirit shall receive what? Power. Church today receive power. Power. And I feel like in the church today, so many times we get accustomed, you know, with building up an atmosphere that seemingly is like the Holy Spirit, but minus His power and minus the works of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to just have service and sing a bunch of songs that sound good and hear words that are penetrating into our hearts, but minus the power and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, I want to come, I want to be filled, I want His presence to touch me deep in my heart where I come in and I leave this place changed. 
Something has taken place in my heart. And i got to tell you, it is all to do with the works of the Spirit of God. We need a real demonstration of spirit and power in the church. It is fundamental for the church to operate in and through the power of the Spirit of God. We don't want to be caught up with the hype of media. I mean, you know, media is a big thing in the church. I'm not saying it's not a good thing. But so many times we rely on these things, media, technology, and all these materialism things that we have brought into the church to carry the church to a place of where it's preaching the gospel of Jesus. How many of you know the power of God does not need these things? God's word has the power itself to present himself and, and to change people's lives and, and to bring about an attraction of the hearts of people. But so many times we find in the church it's all about professionalism. But I feel like we need to get past all of that and really have an encounter with the Spirit of God where we don't become professionals at being Christians and playing church and building church. And this is how a church should be done. But be led by the Spirit and be filled by the Spirit so that when you come in church, you're not smiling because you have to because you're a Christian. You smile because the Spirit of God is doing something inside. It's just amazing how your attitudes and characters change when you're in church. Man, we, we've gotten to that place where you know, we know how to do it. We've got to get past that. You know, don't you get tired of smiling when you know you're in the inside? You know, I don't want to just come to church and just sit and hear something good. I, I want something to happen in my life that will cause a change, that will cause a, a chain reaction in me. That the me that I know yesterday is no longer the me that I know today. The me that I know yesterday is not just only, you know, it's not the, the change doesn't only take place in church, but it is demonstrated out there. And I tell you this many times, we have a form of godliness, bias, and power. The church is not about an organization or tradition or culture. Our reputation, though, is based on success and the efficiency of administration. We see in the New Testament, we see in the early church, as much as these things are important, they relied upon the Spirit, and the Spirit of God is what birthed the church, it is what carried the church, it is what gave the church the power to preach its word. And I tell you, the move of God has to start by a stirring of the Spirit of God in our hearts. May not the works of the church be demonstrated by the ingenuity of man, or the unity of man's power, or the unity of man's mind, or the effectiveness, or the efficiency of how we can do things. Man, how do you know we can do things pretty good? If you don't believe that, look at the Bible. We see about the Tower of Babel. These people who got together, and they were in one mind, in one accord. And God said, you know, these people are together, and you know what? Up there, you know, in their own strength, they will build something. In their own might, they will do something. And many times we find ourselves in the church caught up in that place and where it's all about that. The Tower of Babel is being there. They just find itself back in the church. It's, you know, it's unity. You know, there's all these things that's going on, but this mind is the battle of the Spirit of God. And when it's fine as the power of God, how is the church functioning? Because the Spirit of God brings the understanding of God's mind and His ways, His thoughts. We're so caught up in trying to duplicate a type of spirit-filled movement that we make it happen right as the Spirit of God. Sometimes we try, try, you know, you know, we've seen that how, how many know that we see people move the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and we like that. Like, you know, I want that. But the 
wrong intentions, the wrong understanding. Um, how do you know that um, that uh, magician in the Bible, Simon, who saw uh, the apostles lay hands on people that were filled by the Spirit, and he came up and he said, you know what? Um, how much? I, I don't want to buy that enough. And, and, and the apostles just turned to him and said, this is not something that can be bought. And he began to forget that sometimes I find that our mindsets are so in that place of where we try to manipulate or, or try to work something that is, you know, similar to the work of the Spirit minus Him. And I tell you, it can work. Church can go, can grow. Church can work. People can come in and it can be filled. But I tell you what, the change and what happens in their lives is something else. And church becomes a clubhouse. You know, where people just come in, you know. But what I'm going to tell you, church has got to be different because church has got to be filled with the Spirit of God. There needs to be awakening in the church by the power of the Spirit of God. There needs to be a mighty move of the Spirit of God. There needs to be a mighty move of His power in our lives. And when we come, we're, you know, we're, 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 we're hungry and thirsty for the things of God. We're hungry for miracles. We're hungry for signs. We're hungry for wonders. We're hungry for a fresh revelation of God's Word. I'm not just waking up in the morning and like, church today. Yeah, I'm going to go because my other friends are going. If I don't, they're going to ask me during the week where I was. Pastor might see me along the, the weekend. And it gives me the stare that means, where were you? <laughs> you know, it's just, people get that feeling of our pastors. You know, if you weren't in church, and then all of a sudden they see you. You know, many of us struggle with so many issues in, in our lives. You know, that literally dominate our mind, our heart, our body. And, I, and so many times we try to fight it with our own strength try to fight it with many other things in this world. But I gotta tell you, it is not a fight of flesh and blood. It, it is not a fight of human intelligence. You don't have the understanding to, and the strength to fight this thing. You know, it talks about in Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about, you know, how we need to overcome it, you know, by the Spirit of God. It's not a method. It's by the power and the Spirit of God. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Are you with me? And I gotta tell you today, you know, the moment we try to overcome it with our own strength and our own power, that what we do is we push ourselves further away from God rather than drawing closer. But Funny enough that our minds, we always think we're there, right next to him. But why do we feel empty? Why do we feel like, you know, I pray and I don't feel his presence? You know, it's just something's wrong here. I, I know God's word. You know, I, 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 I try to live a good Christian life. But what we're doing is we're doing it in our own strength without the power of God. And how many you know, you know, if the church is to demonstrate the power of Jesus Christ, it's got to stop with each and every one in this place. And it's not the name of the church. It is not the building. It is each and every one of you experiencing and coming face to face, you know, encountering Jesus, encountering God, encountering the Spirit. You can, I tell you this, you can run to many churches try to find out the presence of God. Oh, I heard that place there is much more powerful. Let me go to that church. But if you haven't changed your mindset, you will always be in that place. The power of God will be around you, but you will never see, it will never feel like it has entered in you. You will never feel it inside of you because we have not changed our mindset and how we view things. Church filled with the Spirit starts with 
each and every one of us here in this place. I ought to tell you, when you received Jesus, the Spirit of God came upon you. Some of us don't know about it. You know, we're always just, you know, crying out for it. Fill you with the Spirit. He's in you. You need to acknowledge the Spirit of God. You need to ignite that within you. You need to begin to have faith. You need to cultivate a relationship within you. Because many times we do not know about the Spirit, so we don't encounter it. Sometimes we, we feel it, but we don't know what it's all about. The Spirit of God is in you. Amen. Now, I'm just going to... I'm not going to preach too long today. I just got a couple of things that I know what to share regarding this because I just feel, you know, I, I, myself, you know, I'm just kind of tired of just coming from services minus the power of the Holy Spirit, minus, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. And I got to ignite a passion and a desire in each and every one of you. It doesn't just start here in the church. It starts where you go out there when you're at home, when you're, when you're with your family. You're just, you know, asking the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. You're asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. You're asking the Holy Spirit to work something. You are stirring up the Spirit of God inside of you. And I tell you, it is what you bring in here with that, with the Spirit of God that's going to cause the dynamics of church service to be different. It doesn't start with worship. Worship is a powerful tool. We try, you know, worship helps us, it guides us, and leads us to know God. But it's going to start with you, not in church here, but outside there, where you begin to develop. In the midst of difficulties, in times of trials, we begin to cry out and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Be awakened in my spirit right now. And I tell you, this week was a great awakening for me when I began to pray. How many know prayer is so important? <clears throat> How many of you fasted this week? Oh, I just think it's too much. I, I tell you, I have a, seriously, I have a problem with fasting. Yeah, I become as more like I have to. Because I'm a pastor, I have to set the example. And if you don't, look at me. Do I look like a person that loves to fast? <laughs> You're not lying to you. But you know, this week I said, you know, I gotta control this urge in me that just wants food. Yeah, and I was, you know, when we came in the morning, I said, it was straight today. But as I began to pray, as I began to, you know, and, and I began to like just you know, a uh, 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 stir up the spirit of God within me, you know, some purpose and some meaning and some will came. And I found myself not thinking of food every single time. And I found myself just praying about certain things in my life and, and the things that I need God to work in. And, and I tell you, I'm not, no, I'm not boasting, you know, that, oh, you know, I'm a holy, you know, I love to fast, and, you know, I love to pray. And, and, you know, it's just that when I began to stir up the spirit of God within me, and, you know, it caused something inside of me to resist food. And, you know, I found myself in one mouth. I was like, you know, I've never done this before. I'm not afraid of you. I was like, you know, I'm just kidding on my sister. Now, I'm like, thank you, sister. But, you know, the working of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to talk about some things, you know, because I know the only way to bring about a, a moving of the Spirit of God is not just the power of one person. It is not just the pastor. Are you with me? It is the church, each and every one of you that is in this place. Amen. Each and every life that is sitting in every seat right now, you are the church, and the power of the Holy Spirit is... Uh, waiting for you to open up your heart and to stir it up inside that will cause a big difference in how you view church today. And I'm going to stir that up. There are some areas that I want to look at. Our walk with God, number one. Number two, our fight against sin. Number three, our developing of character in ourselves. 
And as we develop character, it's not just for us, but it is to share and to demonstrate to others, which is for our relationship with others. How many know that it's so important, so vital, that we walk with God? We do not understand, we cannot understand God. The scripture says that he wants to understand the might of God has to know his spirit. Minus the spirit of God, we can try and attempt, and that is the reason why we have so many denominations in this world and so many uh, religions in this world because they're seeking for God minus his spirit. What about that? We get to a certain place where we plateau because we can't go beyond that. Our understanding cannot go beyond that. And each person that tries to seek God gets to a certain place where he plateaus and that's the end of his understanding. And so he gets up and begins to declare another thing that is minus God. He's, he, he knows there's a God, but he, he gets to the place of connecting and he can't. Because it's minus the spirit. It is minus the understanding of God's spirit. And what happens is that if we don't understand God, we begin to produce so many religions. We begin to produce not God's ideas, but ideas that are seemingly like God. It's good. People like it. Fits with my life. But how do you know that God's ways are never ours? That's how you know the decisions and choices you are making are right. But it has to come by the work of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, when we begin to, you know, stir it up inside of us and we say, Holy Spirit, begin to lead, give me understanding, open my mind to see who you are. Now I want to tell you today, don't be Christians that just settle, you know, just for people who talk. Like right now, I'm talking to you about a lot of things. I don't want you to be Christians that just sit on my words. Like with me. You go back and you study and you find out for yourself. Because you need to find out what is the truth, and that truth will set you free. Amen. And so when we begin to get in tune with the Spirit of God, when we begin to hear His Word, Word brings about faith in us, and faith we need in connection with the Spirit of God to understand who God is, because He is somebody that is up there, and we don't see Him, we cannot, uh, 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 you know, um, personalize Him in any, in, in any way, but we know He is there, His Word says it, and we feel His presence, and that is why faith is important. That faith produces the ability to believe and, and, and knit ourselves with the Spirit of God. And what happens is that our minds begin to open. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Let's look at that. Get up and read. Stand up, read it loud. Live by the Spirit and you will not gratify what? Desires of the lust of the sinful nature. Now, as we begin to align ourselves with the Spirit of God, what happens is our minds are open to the things of God. We begin to understand His Word, and then we begin to trust Him, and then it begins to build in our lives, and we find ourselves in a position where, you know, when we begin to open up His Word, God begins to speak to us. And that's the importance of God's Word, uh, sorry, the Holy Spirit, with our relationship with God. He opens up our mind. Minus the Spirit of God, we have no understanding or comprehension of who God is. We 
we can try to understand him, but we won't reach that point. The Bible says here in 1 Corinthians, let me just read it just to, you know, just to try to, you know, connect it with you here. Verse 9, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But as it is written, things which eye has not seen, and the ear has not heard, and which have not entered the hearts of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Now, first of all, what does that say? We do not understand or know what? The things that God has prepared for those who love him. He's referring even to the people who love him. And it goes on. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Amen. Verse 11, for who among men knows the thoughts of men except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now listen carefully, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Now when we begin to understand, we begin to connect ourselves with the Holy Spirit, Man, it just begins to, it's like a translation process and where things that were just, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, gibberish, you know, and, and, and foreign uh, language just makes sense. What does it mean to live by faith? You know, I'm taught in school that I need to plan, I need to figure out things, I need to be set in all these things. I, I, I need to, you know, uh, I need to study to know but here the Bible is saying I have to have faith to trust with God. When we connect ourselves with the Spirit of God, you know what? That just gives us an access to what faith is all about. So we see the importance of the Holy Spirit in our book. You know, I've, made, I've read the Bible so many times that every time I read it, God speaks to me. Now you probably heard that from many people.